All right, it's time now to welcome in Lakers assistant coach Phil Handy. As always, it's so good to catch up with you. Phil, it's good to see you. I hope you are healthy and safe. Is that the case? How are you and your family? Man, everybody's good, Allie. It's, uh, it's good catching up with you, too. There is no, uh, no issues over here. My family's good. I'm good. Uh, just been laying low and enjoying, enjoying some time to myself. To yourself, however, how's little Jackson doing? You already know I was going to ask about the little man. He just turned seven over the weekend. That's really all I care about. Wow. <laughs> well, Jackson is doing really well. Yeah. He's getting he's he's getting big. Um, he's growing. He's challenging me to uh, figure out fatherhood. I was so. gonna say, who's ruling the house? <laughs> Him or you? Are you still in control? Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, I lay down. I lay down the law in my house. My father taught me that a oh, long time ago. Shoot. But with that being said, you know how kids kids have a way to take our heart and and leave us standing just with our our jaws dropped so i mean i'm enjoying spending some time with him as well we actually uh have javel on the show and he was talking about during this time he could not understand why his daughter or children in general how they can ask the question why so many times in a day <laughs> what have you learned about jackson is there anything you know he he's not a kid that really asks why Oh. He, uh, no, really, he doesn't really ask me that a lot. He's, he is so inundated with basketball. There's really no other conversations that, <laughs> that happen. Like he's, uh, he's here. He wants to be on the Xbox all day. He wants to play basketball on day, whether it be on a, on a court in the house, a court at the park. There aren't, there's not too many why questions except for why can't we play basketball? Which I love, and it leads me into this question, because outside of your family, it is your passion. It's what you do, uh, Phil. But I love the one aspect outside of the NBA realm uh, of what you spend so much of your time in, giving back to the youth, girls, boys, young women, young men. Um, and I know that you've been doing a lot with Jackson, but also others. Uh, you have your app, 94 Feet of Game, uh, which actually my producer has got his nephew hooked on uh, as well. <laughs> Uh, what okay. has been the latest with that? Have you dove into any other new things given this time of isolation right now? What's going on with the app? Well, you know, Ali, the app has kind of like just been a passion project for me. That's been something that I've loved. And before I even became an NBA coach, I used to work with kids of all ages, uh, all gender, you know, and it was, it was something that it just where I started. So, being able to spend some time now with this with this pandemic to to do some things on the app and help kids at home, uh, this has just been something that tremendously um, fulfilling for me. It's just it's where I started. You know, 94 feet of game started in 1999, and it wasn't with NBA athletes. It was with kids uh, all over the place, and then it just kind of blossomed and grew. So the app has been a great source for people at home kids, parents, coaches, trainers. Uh, it's just been something that's really given me a lot of satisfaction to kind of give back to the game. And there's also a lot of drive, uh, and I know Laker Nation will love hearing this, uh, between you and your relationship with Kobe, correct? Absolutely. Um, you know, me and Kobe were, were kind of working on and discussing on putting together an app that had to do with the whole mama mentality and, and really, it was going to be an interface of his brain and just being able to click on per certain parts of his brain. And you would have all these different Kobe, Kobe S sayings and dialogue. And it was really more on the mental side and to just help people understand what the mama mentality was about uh, and different topics. Mm. So I'm, you know, Beyond bummed that that's not uh, going to be able to come to fruition, but you know this this basketball app here, you know the Mamba his 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 women's team, you know we spent a lot of time you know, working with his girls and you know we talked about doing some things on the women's side of basketball to promote on the app. So you know that stuff I'm going to continue to do, but um, the whole Mamba Mamba mentality app I obviously will not will not happen.
Everyone, of course, needs to go check that out. The 94 feet of game app by assistant coach for the Lakers, Phil Handy. And, of course, I know you have um, a session with NBA or WNBA champion, excuse me, Jewel Lloyd coming up. So we'll have to go check that out. Uh, when it goes from that to your passion, to your baby, the Lakers, of course, the NBA, um, if you don't mind, I want to get your uh, – your initial thoughts, reactions when, of course, the NBA suspended the season due to COVID-19? Well, for selfish reasons, I was pissed. Mm -hmm. My own selfish reason, uh, aside from our team and and what we were trying to accomplish. Man, I want to keep my streak alive, Ali. I've been, <laughs> the, I've been to the finals five straight times. I was look, <sighs> looking forward to having the opportunity to to make it six. How much so do for you, me, hang on real quick. How much do you and Braun go back and forth with? Are you going to catch up to his streak of what was oh, it? No, no, let's, no, it's over. No? Oh, listen, okay. last, okay. last year when I was in Toronto and we won the Eastern conference, I FaceTimed Braun right after the championship game and said, jokingly, there's a new King in the East. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Raise your hand. Raise your hand and say I, I took just it playing. there. I was just playing. Listen, <laughs> that, that man, that man's been to what? Eight straight finals? Yeah. At one point. Oh, that's that's unheard of. Yeah, but that's unheard of. but I appreciate your truth and your honesty <laughs> that because I think a lot of people have felt this, though we understand that it's much bigger than sport. Um, Absolutely. That there was a lot that you guys were working towards. You were the number one seed in the West. Uh, you yeah. were ramping up. I think for, for Laker faithfuls mm -hmm. and the Laker organization, this was kind of like a long time coming. You know, the last time that the Lakers made the playoffs, I think I was actually part of that team uh, in 2011, 12? 12, 12, 12, 13, you know, 12, 13 when Mike Brown, Mike Brown was coaching and actually, sorry, Dan Tony, and that was the last time we made the playoffs and we were, we were an injury riddled roster. And so since then, you know, the Lakers have kind of just been in that area of, you know, trying to redevelop, put together a new squad. And then this year we come out the gates the way we did. I think a lot of people were just had high expectations and, and the energy, you could feel the energy in Los Angeles with the fans and the people in the organization of just what we were working towards. If and when basketball resumes, who do you think this hiatus, I guess, favors most? A veteran team like the Lakers or more of a younger team? Man, Ali, that's such a tough question because I think it really just depends on what people have been doing uh, individually. You know, I think there's only so much people can do without having access to gyms. So if, if individual players have their own gym at home, of course they have an advantage, you know, because they can get on the court and work. And I just really think it would be one of those situations where it could be anybody's game <laughs> because mm -hmm. there's so much time off. And uh, I would, you know, understand that who knows who knows what's going to happen if the NBA does come back. This time, especially, I can't help but think of how impactful you really are. I mean, for those who so many people do know that you were at one point a player development coach and were so hands on with workouts. Obviously, you are now an assistant coach, but how much has this time changed for you in terms of developing workouts for the Lakers uh, to be able to put themselves in a position if this thing does return uh, to be as successful no, as possible? No different, Allie. I'm still, I'm still, you know, Coach Frank has kind of given me the lead on the development for the Lakers, even as a front of the bench assistant. Mm -hmm. So every day I'm still very hands on with our players uh, during the season, developing our workouts and, and still being on the court working with guys on a daily basis. So that part hasn't changed for me. But, you know, what we've tried to do is, um, you know, our medical staff and the strength conditioning staff are, are sending guys workouts. I put together some 10-minute some at-home ball handling workouts, okay. which are also available on app. I've sent those, sent those to those guys to where they can try to have some things to stay active with a basketball. Especially we've seen Danny Green uh, doing some of those ball handling drills. I assume those are from you. Um, yeah. From an assistant coach's standpoint, of course, as you mentioned, Coach Vogel, we had him on here um, as well, but it was a couple weeks ago. So from a coaching mentality in terms of what you guys are focusing on as a staff, how much has that changed over the last few weeks? What are you guys doing now? Well, obviously, 
we're not meeting physically, we're not practicing. So I think everybody, when this whole thing happened, it just was a shift in life. And so everybody was just, look, we're going to take some time, spend some time with your families and just try to grasp a mental understanding of what's happening. Uh, and now we've kind of started easing into Frank has just kind of given us some projects to watch film. Uh, you know, let's, let's kind of maybe potentially watch some teams that we might play in the playoffs. Nothing too heavy. Uh, we meet once a week and really just kind of diving ourselves into, into film work. Before we get into some of the fun things, I want to ask you, how much has this kind of challenged you mentally? This pandemic? Mm-hmm. And just what you're, nah. you're still, you know, you know your, your normal life was built around winning another championship. A no, and for me, I've embraced this, Allie. Like, I've embraced the time to kind of step away from the game. So for the last nine years as a coach, I haven't had any field time. And so I've, I've embraced sitting on my couch, <laughs> watching Netflix. <laughs> I've been playing Xbox. Um I've just embraced just being able to do some things that I normally can't do away from the game. And so that part for me has been has been awesome. So I haven't had to really challenge myself mentally. I've just enjoyed enjoyed the downtime. Like a lot of people are saying, it's just an honest, healthy reset uh, right. within it all. You mentioned Netflix. <laughs> what are you watching on Netflix? So I finished Ozark. Ooh, me uh, too. Yeah, that's great. Wild. Show. I've been, I watch, I say I'm different. I watch a lot of documentaries. Okay. Formula One is an awesome show. Like okay. I'm, I'm, I'm into other sports at a high level. Mm -hmm. So for, Formula One's an amazing documentary about Formula One drivers and their teams and what they do. So I've watched that. I watched this show called Money Heist. Oh, I heard uh, about that one lately. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I just, you know, whatever, whatever comes up that seems interesting. Obviously, right now it's on um, ESPN, but I saw that it is in conjunction with Netflix. The Last Dance. Please tell me that you're watching that. Oh, absolutely. Your initial Listen, I, thoughts? I grew up. I grew up an MJ fan. I grew up watching MJ and cheering for him, even though I was from the Bay Area. So for me to be able to go back and, and relive some of that stuff from a, from a fan standpoint, oh, it's, it's awesome. Bill, seven years, 18 million. Seven years, 18 million. Could you believe yeah, that? That's, that's ridiculous. Look, it was before the time, right? <laughs> and so, no, no, listen, listen. What does Scotty say? His answer was, I didn't feel like I could take a chance for my family. Yep. And even though management might have said, hey, don't sign this or whatever, no one knew what the salaries were potentially going to become. So he felt like, like I got to do what I have to do to take care of my family. Mm -hmm. Now in the process of that, <laughs> when, <laughs> when he, when these salaries started to balloon, like I think human nature, just as Scotty, one of the best players in the league was like, okay, well, you know, maybe, maybe I need to have my deal renegotiated. I just, I think that's the business side of it, but I definitely understood why he did it when he did it, you right. know, to protect his and secure, secure some security for his family. Uh, and I think he's done just well for himself since then. Right. Uh, with that said, the only bad part about all of that on Sunday night was the fact that we didn't get all 10 episodes. Um, I think it's for <laughs> sure that we are all locked in and focused in on that one. Uh, you say you're playing video games, Xbox. What do you think of the NBA 2K tournament? I didn't watch it. I saw a little glimpses of it, but it seemed like them dudes were locked in. Oh. Uh, I mean, I haven't played Xbox in probably like nine years. So for me, <laughs> would like you consider these, yourself a gamer? Uh, yes, I am. Oh, okay. Because many people don't know. Back in my teenage days, I used to work for Sega oh. testing video games. No way. So I had, oh man, listen, my summer job, <laughs> I got paid $18 an hour to test video games all day long. Please. Eighteen dollars. Okay, so Back I'll then, never. Eight, listen, listen. I was making some dough. <laughs> okay, Scotty. Okay. Uh, with that, with that said, how good were you at Sonic the Hedgehog? Elite. 
Where, where, where are the tapes? Where are the tapes? We need to see the tapes. Listen, I don't even know why I, I asked you that. I'm not believing that. I used to test the video game. I was elite. That was years ago. But I'm telling you, man, I was at a high level with Sonic Hedgehog. <laughs> what are you listening to? What are you reading? Before I let you go. Um, I haven't been reading anything. Okay. To, 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 be, to be honest. Uh, I haven't but either. listening okay. to music. <laughs> Now my 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 uh, my playlist is pretty eclectic. Uh, I listen to all kind of stuff: Little Baby, The Baby, Travis Scott, Drake. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty wide range. Sade, people don't know who that is. I've learned about you know, her since I came here to Los Angeles. Oh, uh, here in the studio, yeah. they they teach me some things. She's a legend. So I've learned. She is a legend. Uh, one thing we always say on this show, Phil, especially when it comes to Kyle Kuzma, is the one thing he never lacks and that never wavers <laughs> is his confidence. And that can be said the same about you. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for taking the time. Say hello to Jackson for me. Uh, stay safe. Appreciate it. Thank you.